it is not necessarily mandatory to develop systems that will be Part 11 compliant for products that are not sold in the United States. However, I would say that the expectations for data integrity in the rest of the world are very, very similar to the requirements of Part 11. So strictly speaking, you don't need to develop these, uh, these systems uh, in compliance with Part 11, but if you don't, uh, you're asking for trouble with the European regulators or the Japanese regulators or the Canadian regulators or whoever because the expectations around data integrity are pretty universal. GAMP's uh, involvement with clinical systems compliance is evolving for quite some time. Uh, we have a very active clinical group within GAMP that has developed several articles and guidances. You really have to think about what the product is of a clinical study. Uh, clinical studies don't develop drugs, they develop data about the drugs. So if you want a safe and efficacious drug, you want to make sure that the, that the data that comes out of a clinical study is, is uh, of high integrity. Uh, and it's also, also worth noting that uh, when I taught a data integrity course in Bethesda, uh, in 2018, I had 35 students in the class and 20% of them were from the FDA's uh, clinical uh, area. To maintain compliance during an operational phase, you have to recognize and, and remember and, and pay attention to the fact that, that validation is not an event, it's a state. Uh, and really what the regulators will tell you they're looking for is a state of control. And if you don't manage your systems uh, with uh, rigorous change control and do periodic evaluations of status uh, and things like that, you really can't claim that the system is validated anymore. Uh, typically, I think if you, if you ignore a system for three years, you're out of validation. <laughs>